Well, glory to God. Guys, welcome to Believers International Church. If you're new to us online or here, we're so glad you're with us. We have an incredible message for you today. We're going to continue on our series, Wisdom Proverbs for Daily Life. And we're going to take a turn and we're going to focus on Proverbs chapter 17. And it is an amazing chapter. We're going to go over some verses in that. But let's say our confession together. Let's say this together. I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm bright, I'm good looking, I'm strong, I'm healed, I'm very rich, and I'm a major blessing. There's a new one up there, isn't there? I used to always say this, and this week I was reminded of it, so I just put it up. Bright, you guys are bright. Bright. Hello. You ever see light brights where the kids put the little things in the screen, and they're all like, bing, bing, bing. That's you. Bing, bing, bing. Well, some of you aren't, but some, most of you, I'm just like, most of you are. You're the salt of the earth. You're the light of the world. This series was birthed out of a heart from God to give us wisdom for all of us in our daily lives. We all need that daily push, that daily launch, that daily word from the Lord to keep us on our path and to make us stronger, to heal our families and bring success to everything in our lives from all our relationships, all our business deals. I said deals. Someone's going through some deals right now and God's there with you to help you through those deals. But there's a high way, way of living, and that's where we're going off on Proverbs. Our main scripture verse is James 1.17, and it's the companion book. Proverbs and James are both wisdom books. It says this in verse 17, every good and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, whom there's no variableness or shadow of turning. Copy that onto Proverbs 2.6, and it says this, the wisdom, the wisdom of God, wisdom from heaven, is a gift from a generous God. Don't you love that? (sighs) We have a generous God. I don't know, that just sets me free. Wisdom is a gift from a generous God and every word he speaks is full of revelation and becomes a fountain of understanding within you. We're just gonna dive in because you know me, I don't like to beat around the bush or go, I just like to get into the message. We're going right into Proverbs chapter 17 and this This chapter is an amazing chapter, and there are so many different subjects intertwined in this chapter, and I just saw this one very clear today. It shows us heaven's wisdom on how to walk in peace in our lives. Does anybody need peace in their lives? There's eight people in here. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) We all need peace in our lives. It's one of the biggest things that Pastor Carol and I follow in our daily lives. And so this was very important to me. It has the power of supernatural relationships versus natural relationships. You could say it this way. It shows us in Proverbs chapter 17, spiritual relationships and the outcome and the outcome of natural relationships, trying to do things on your own. (laughs) <laughs> Woohoo, it's going good oh so far. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This verse, the first verse, really sets the pace for the chapter. And it's interesting. It says this a dry crust of bread. So a dry crust of bread eaten in peace is better than a steak every day along with argument and strife. I will take a French baguette. And I love French baguettes. I was taught in France how to, you pull all the bread out and you put bananas and you put strawberries and whipped cream and all this cool berries and stuff in it. And you just strum it all up and you eat it. It's awesome. I would rather have a baguette in peace than have a steak dinner with a bunch of people that are in strife and arguing and division. How about you? And that's what this chapter is about. He's launching it, kind of like I do. I just go for it. He's launching it, and he's saying, listen, guys, get the bread, walk in peace, don't have the steak, and be around other people that are going to bring you down. But right here, he shows us two things. He shows us right here, a dry crust of bread eaten in peace is better than a steak every day along with argument and strife. He is taking, these are opposites, peace is the opposite of argument and strife. Mm-hmm. Amen. 
That's huge. We could just stop right there and just meditate on that and, and go home and go, wow. You know, it's interesting because, you know, a lot of people, and we have a lot of people uh, from out, all over the world. Thank you for joining us, Believers family. We love you so much. And as they join us, they don't know what this word strife is. So guess what? Pastor David put it up. <laughs> what is strife? And this is interesting. And we can all find a little word in here. What is strife? Definition of strife is argument, bicker, 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 brawl, ooh, that's a big one, discord, dispute, divide, falling out, fight, fisser, I like that one, fisser, fisser, hassle, jar, miff, mix up, quarrel, row, run in, scrap, spat, squabble, tiff, or wrangle. Wrangle. One's, we got one over here. We got a wrangling over here. Just kidding. <laughs> this is an amazing thing to look at because strife is actually fighting back when people criticize you or put you and say you're wrong about something. I'll say it again. Strife is basically this. Fighting back when people criticize you is a huge one. Oh, come on, guys. Don't you love to fight back? No, 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 you, you shouldn't. Or wrong you. When someone wrongs you, how is your reaction? I mean, this is supernatural. This is heaven's wisdom, guys. This is heaven's wisdom. Supernatural wisdom. Well, I just love to fight people. Ouch. You mean I can't do this? Yes, you need to walk in love towards people. For your health, if anything. So many people, and, and I was just, actually, I just emailed Marilyn. Hi, Marilyn in Canada, Alberta, Canada. She's one of our members up in Canada. And we were talking about different things. And we were talking about lo uh, longevity. And we know two people. I've met a, a gentleman who is 96 not too long ago, and our neighbor, she's just turning 96. And I'm just like, why are you guys around so long? And they said, one of the things they said is, one, of course, both of them said, we love the Lord. And they don't have a, I mean, the, the girl has a walker. The guy, look, he's 96, and he looks like 70. I mean, the guy's amazing. But the thing that got me was this. I said, so, so why are you around? Is there a reason why you're around? They go, I don't know. We just love people. really you know and a lot of you would say well i just hate people <laughs> if it wasn't for people this would be a better world no no god put them in this world so that we can love on them and bring them to jesus amen? amen hallelujah we are not supposed to fight people period done deal over with ephesians 6 12 says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood remember that scripture but against principalities and powers come on darkness we don't we don't we, we're the light guys we don't fight people we, there's something behind the motive of people to get them so upset and we're finding that out right now and one of the things is strife we can see here that you can have peace or we can have strife that means they're opposites james is our companion of proverbs and it says this in james 316 for anywhere for where envying and strife is there is confusion in every evil work woohoo there you will find discord and evil of every kind. This is not in heaven. This is not in heaven. I, we're going to get up there and I'm going to tell you what, there's going to be order, there's going to be peace. <sighs> Aren't we going to be excited to be up there? God doesn't put up with strife in heaven because the person that brought strife to heaven doesn't live there anymore. And that's the devil. He brought discord, disunity, anger, strife, selfishness. We're not going to have that up there. God's not going to allow that. He's not going to put up with it up there. And that's why we need to have peace in our lives. And if we want the peace of God that surpasses all understanding, as the Bible says, we need to guard our hearts. Yeah. You know? I mean, it's just, it's a big deal to be an overcomer. So this whole chapter, just we're going to go over a couple of verses, not too long today. How to live a peaceful life. Wow. I don't know about you, but that sets me free. I love peace. I love it. Let's go over a couple of things that Proverbs 17 says. One thing, we'll go down a little bit. Proverbs 17 says, do the right thing, seek love, and overlook offense. Somebody's being healed of a back. I don't know who it is. I was praying this morning, and the Lord said, can I move? And I said, yes, sir. 
I'm not sure if it's our believers online family or if it's someone in here, but I believe someone's back is being healed in Jesus name. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for that back and backs. Whoever is watching this, who's ever here, Father God, who's ever in the sound of my voice, they could be next door, it could be wherever, Father. I just thank you that we speak to backs in Jesus' name. We command every vertebrae to line up in the name of Jesus. We, every, vein, every single particle in peace and DNA line up. And muscles, you relax. And that back gets back in place. Amen. Perfectly whole. And we thank you for it, Father, for your glory and your honor in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. So we don't find this disunity in heaven because God won't put up with it. Well, how much more should we put it up with in our lives? Number one, the first thing we see in Proverbs chapter 17 is seeking love and overlooking any offense that comes after you. He who covers and forgives an offense seeks love. But he who repeats or harps on a manner separates even close friends. Responding in love covers and forgives any sin, any strife, any argument, anything that you have. Amen. Amen. Towards you, towards other people, on the workplace, in your family, because we know each other so well, sometimes we think we can say things that we shouldn't in our families. Come on, David, preach the fire. <laughs> it's interesting because uh, a companion verse, this is Proverbs 17 and Proverbs 19, two chapters from here, it says this in verse 11, good sense makes a man restrain his anger. That alone. And it is his glory to overlook a transgression or offense. The Bible says it's possible to overlook offenses that people have against us. You know, the first thing I remember when Pastor Carol Joe and I were dating, we were dating and we, our, our main thing was, is, you know, she had just gotten through a divorce, if that's okay if I can say that, sweetie. And um, we were both just seeking peace and we, we just fell in love with each other. But the main thing we thought was, first, we're going to have a relationship with God, number one, in our marriage, if we're going to have a marriage, if we're going to have a friendship. God's number one. Second thing is, we won't let the sun go down. We won't let five minutes pass without walking in forgiveness, amen, and forgiving one another. And that's huge, guys. I said, that's huge. A lot of people say, why is your marriage so successful? Well, one, number one, it's the Lord. I don't try to change her. She doesn't try to change me. We go to the Lord and the Lord's changing us because we're going to him and we're saying, what, what do I need to change? What do I need to work on? And of course, I pray for Pastor Carol, Joy. I, I pray for her all the time. Most of the time it's in the spirit or I pray scriptures over her, but I let the Lord minister to her and she lets the Lord minister to us and we have a great mutual respect for each other I respect her gifts I respect her calling I, she's God's daughter and so I need to treat her right come on <laughs> but I remember we said and we talked when we were first dating in fact I can remember that when I when I when I picked her up and I asked her to be my girlfriend she was like wow I've never had someone ask me to be you know but I remember we talked about <laughs> it's a couple uh, we were yeah it felt like we were teenagers we're a little older felt like we were teenagers we're only made how many years now honey two years we've been married two years now 22 years 22 years young Glory to God. But anyways, I remember that. And we, the first thing we talked about is we're not going to let any strife, any quarrels, or any division get in between us. We're not going to have anything rob our peace, rob our strength, rob our health, rob our relationships, rob our faith. Anything to do with life. And I think this chapter 17 says it all. I mean, so many people, and if I can say it this way, a lot of you guys like sports, a lot of you girls like sports. You know, when it comes to marriage, you don't keep a scorecard. <laughs> well, she did that to me. Oh, boy, I got to write that. Oh, no, oh, 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 I got all these points. No, no. We rip up sports uh, scorecards as Christians towards anyone. 
Come on, that's Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 13. No offense. And go off on that for a while. But listen, we have to always remember this is not a competition. We're not into scores. We're not into goals. No, this is, we're into God. And God's love and heaven's ways are so much different than the world's ways. Amen? I don't want someone to keep a scorecard on me. How about you? Especially Jesus. The Lord doesn't keep scorecards, guys. You know what a scorecard is, right? That means 15 goals here, three goals. You know who's going to win? There's no, there is no winner, winner, chicken dinner in a relationship. It's mutual. Amen? I said it's mutual. If that even gets started, it's like game over. That's right? right? Yeah. Like game over. We're done. That's it. This kind of love is thinking like Jesus. Jesus thought the heavenly thoughts. But John 15, 12 through 14 says, and everybody knows this verse, John 15, 12 through 14, this is my commandment that I give to you. Come on. That love one another just as I have loved you. No one has greater love. No one has shown stronger affection to lay down their own life, give up their own life, become unselfish for their friends, for their loved ones. You are my friends if you keep on doing things which I command you. The Bible says that we can stop strife, quarrels, and division. I said the Bible says we can stop. We can see them before they're coming. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 17, 14 says this. The beginning of strife is as if water first trickles from a crack through a dam. Therefore, stop contention before it becomes worse and quarreling breaks out. There's a crack coming. You're like, if you're talking to somebody and all of a sudden they just start changing... Well, they're not that. That's kind of an exaggeration. <laughs> like I'd start running. Just kidding. But, um, you know, if they start changing, then, then you kind of sense it. And I, I think what my teacher, um, one of my teachers in Bible college, his name was um, Keith Moore. And he was, he was, you know, teaching classes. And I had talked to him one time about something. And, and I, I was very fearful when I came to him. I was like, you know, just, yes, sir. And, you know, and then I got, I got home. No, I, I got to my next class. And um, I thought, you know, what a jerk, David. He's a teacher. He loves you. Why are you in fear about this thing? Why don't you go back and tell him what you wanted to say? And so I went back, I found him after school in the hallway, and I said, hey, Mr. Moore, and uh, he was there, he goes, yes, sir, and I said, yeah, um, I just want you to know that I was, I was in fear earlier, and he goes, I know it, really. I learned a lot from him about motives. When a person comes to you, they have a motive. That's true. Mm -hmm. yeah. Most of the time, it's a good motive, it's a heart motive, but sometimes, I'm going off, guys, but sometimes it's not a good motive, and I'm not, I'm not saying that you have to be trampled on. Come on. I mean, this is not in my notes. Someone needs to hear this. You need to follow the Holy Ghost because the Bible says as many as are led by the Holy Spirit, they are the sons and daughters of God. And that's for somebody. As many as are led by the Holy the Holy Spirit, not led by circumstances, not led by a spouse that's upset, not led by, but led by the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit leads you in peace. Yeah. Amen. Mm, I could tell um, God's got some answers for, God's got some answers today, guys. Just be in faith with me. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So like a crack in a dam, you can see aggravating people coming ahead of time. Wisdom says here, ready and be ready. Uh, another translation says that it's hard to stop a quarrel once it starts. Do you ever try to stop something? When it, I mean, because you want to just, oh, I just want to get involved, man. Come on, let's go. Come on, you come on, let's do it. No, we don't want to do that. It's hard to stop a quarrel once it starts, so don't let it begin. And that's where we shut things down. Even when we're talking about other people, if Pastor Carol joins us, start going into a negative way, we'll stop ourselves. No, Father, forgive us. Forgive us. We are not going to be involved in strife in any way, shape, or form, even if the people are not there. You just don't talk about people. That goes over really big. <laughs> 
It's true, guys. We don't want to be talkers about other people. We want to lift other people because those words, the Bible says, those words come back on you. Yeah. Whatever you sow, you reap. Yeah, right. Ouch. Glory to God. So we don't want that. Let me get, I'm almost, Father, can I get by the way? <laughs> you prayed that out. Thank you, sweetheart. They prayed that. She prayed that out. That's good. No, but um, thank you, sweetheart. <laughs> thank you, Lord, for helping me. I just, I, just, I just have a heart for people. And our success is because we've tried to stay out of people's business the best we can. And we love people no matter what they have done to us. We have been criticized by experts. Strife experts. <laughs> Pastor Carol's like, yep. So we need to remember that love is the most powerful force because God is love. And love is the key to everything. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, where am I going with this today? Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, hallelujah. It's hard to stop a quarrel once to start. You will never have a happy, peaceful home, marriage, friendships, unless you resist strife quarrels, division of any kind in your home. And that's, you know, it's Father's Day and we're, we just celebrate. Father, happy Father's Day to any of the fathers all over the world in America. We have a, a, a holiday to honor our dads, honor our papas, honor our fathers. And so if you're joining us today and you're a father, uh, we honor you and we're praying for you and we love you and happy Father's Day to you. Glory to God. So back on this card. So we talk about scorecards, the love commandment was which we were getting into and uh, thinking like Jesus thought. And uh, I am just having fun up here, guys. How about you? I'm just seeing where we're going next. <laughs> I try to stick to my notes as much as possible, but I know the Holy Ghost is moving in these last days yeah. as the waters cover the sea, the Bible says. So that means he's moving all over the place and churches everywhere that are open for him to move. And what we want is the Holy Spirit to be able to move because we want lives changed. Jesus said in Luke chapter four, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he've anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To heal the brokenhearted. Mm -hmm. yeah. To give sight to the blind. Yeah. They're bruised, banged up. And that's what the anointing and the Holy Spirit wants to do. That's what the church is. The church is where people could come in and get healed. Or listen and be healed and get strengthened. If you're in a country, and I know there's people watching from different countries, you don't have a local church anywhere. And we're glad to be your local church and strengthen you so you can start your own church and reach out to us if you want to do that. But I'll tell you what, the Holy Spirit is moving on the earth as the water covers the sea. And we're going to see more revelation about the Spirit of God coming into the church in the last days than we've never, ever, ever, we've ever seen it before. Why is that? Because the Word of God and the Spirit of God, they work together to bring an explosive force of healing deliverance, come on now, soundness, preservation. I mean, instantaneous things we saw in the Old Testament. We're seeing it today in different countries around the world and even here in Jesus' name. So that's why I'm open to the Holy Spirit. I can't do nothing without the Spirit of God in the morning. Holy Spirit, what are we doing today? Well, which way you want me to drive to the church? Sometimes he'll go a different way. I'm not going to question him. Well, you're getting a little bit out there, David. No, I'm not. We, this is the Bible. The Bible says we need to be led by our hearts, by the Holy Spirit, that knowing on the inside of us. Not so, I'm, I don't look for voices. Come on, guys. I follow the knowings in my life. Amen? And so in relationships and in following peace, and I think that's a big subject, uh, following peace, the Holy Spirit will always lead you in peace. And that's how you hear him too. So, where are we? Hallelujah. I feel like just go over and end the service. What do you think? <laughs> so, um, 
You know, talking about love, Jesus said in John 15, 12, that's my commandment. We talked a little bit about that. Jesus is bringing heaven's wisdom to us through Proverbs. And so when we read Proverbs, it is an alive book, just like James is an alive book. And we need to really grasp it. I don't know where I'm at in this, but I'm going to say the next thing, and we're going to end it here, is, is Proverbs 17 says, the outcome of strife is a strife-free life full of love joy, peace, and strength. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. What you pray out, sweetheart? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of, you, some, some of you are going through some things, and God is right there, and you're about this close to deliverance. Don't give up. But it feels like the heat's been turned up. Yeah, you know why? Because you're, you're just about ready to go over the hill. That's right. Hallelujah. So don't look at the mountain. He's leading you around the mountain to your destination. Yep. You're looking so much at the mountain, he just wants to take you around it and just keep on going. Don't look at the mountain in your life. Look at him. Amen? Amen. The Bible says you keep your mind stayed on him. He'll keep you in perfect peace. Today's peace day. Peace day today. Yep. Proverbs 17, says this, a happy heart is good medicine. Ha <laughs> <Yes>. ha. <laughs> Sometimes you just have to laugh and I love it. And I have a little story here. It's going to be a second, but I love this story because Pastor Carol Joy was ministering to women in Poland and she was going through a line of women that were, they were beaten, trot down, they were like, and almost every one of them, she says, you need to laugh. You need to laugh to get set free. One of them, she said, you need to laugh at the devil because he has no place. Yep. <laughs> He's defeated. Right. Yep. Every knee, when this all wraps up, Every knee will bow to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, it says, in heaven and in earth and under the earth. That means the devil, whether he likes it or not, at the end of time is going to bow his knee to the name of Jesus Christ. And you have that same authority right now to put him on the run. Because greater is he that is inside you than he that's in the world. God said in the Old Testament, there's going to be a time when I'm going to live in them and dwell in them. It's here. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. A happy heart is good medicine and a cheerful mind works healing. <laughs> but a broken or weak spirit dries up the bones. Right here, laughter and joy bring strength. I said, laughter and joy bring strength. Peace in your heart and mind is huge because it will heal your body. Yes, that's right. Hallelujah. I believe God's bringing peace to some people yeah. right now. That's right. Wherever you're at, if you're watching, you're here. I believe God is ministering peace supernaturally to you right now. He loves you. He wants you to take that care and give it to him. He wants to carry the load. You weren't built to carry the load. He carries the load. Amen? Yep. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> well, I'm trying to wrap it up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, today we learn from Proverbs, I think. <laughs> 17. You do the right thing, you seek love, and you overlook an offense. Don't you like this intermingling of the Lord here? Second, Bible says you can stop strife, quarrels, and division because you can always see them coming. And when you see them coming, shut them down. Rip up the scorecard, whatever it takes. Number three, the outcome of strife, be strife-free life. When you're strife-free, you're full of peace and strength. 
You're happier or, and more fulfilled because your life is walking with the Lord. It's nice to have the Lord in the room with you, isn't it? And when you're walking in peace, he is. Let's bow our heads. Father God, we just thank you so much for the message today, Father. I believe there could be more to be said, Father God, but I believe you said what you wanted to say, Father. And I thank you for giving all of us the wisdom from Proverbs 17 and more, Father. Your counsel today, Father. Your wisdom today. You get all the glory for every rabbit trail I go on. Whatever word I, I just back up, you get all the glory, Father. In our lives, Father, we thank you for our fathers and our moms and our kids and our grandparents and our uncles and our aunts and all of our family members, Father. We want to walk in a life that is full of peace and full of victory. Yeah, there'll be people coming against us, but we don't have to come against them unless we're led by the Holy Spirit. If we're led, there's a reason for it, and he'll show you that reason. But Father God, we can love people into the kingdom of God in a great and mighty way. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And if you've never asked Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, this is a great day for you. It's a beautiful day for you. If God has touched your heart during this message, I believe he has in some way, shape, or form. He's given you strength. He's given you wisdom. He's given you peace. He's shown himself. And my prayer for you is, God, show yourself to these individuals that don't know you so they can know you in a greater, mightier way, the real you. Not what the world says. God loves you. He would never do anything bad to hurt you in any way, shape, or form. That's a whole other message, but from book to book, cover to cover, the Bible talks about how God's love will make a way for you. If you've never asked the Lord to come into your heart and you'd like to do that today, or if you've fallen away, fallen short of the Lord, I'm not talking about just like today or another day. I'm talking like you, you've had some time away from the Lord and you like, you want to come home. You know, the Bible talks a lot about the prodigal son coming home and how the dad, and if you look that whole scripture verse up, that dad was expecting his son to come back. He was praying for his son. Look it up for yourself. Don't take my word for it. You look that, that, whole, that whole story up. His dad was praying for him. Prodigal son, of course, he said, Dad, give me all the money. I'm out of here. And so dad gave him all his inheritance and he was out of there. He squandered it all. He spent it all. He had everything he wanted, but then he had nothing in the end and he came home. During that time, we see his father expecting him and looking for him. To me, that shows me his father was praying for him. His father was believing God that he would come to know Jesus Christ. Some of you are believing for loved ones right now. Don't give up. I said, don't give up. But if you've never asked the Lord to come in your heart, you're coming home today. If you've been away like a prodigal son or a prodigal daughter, it's time to come home today. Amen. And let's reaffirm our faith as Christians. And let's affirm our faith if we're new and want Jesus in our heart. And let's just raise one hand to heaven. Let's bow our heads and close our eyes and say this after me. Father God, I believe in you. I believe in your son, Jesus, that he died on the cross, that he paid the full price for all my sins. Thank God. Jesus, I accept your sacrifice. Jesus. I confess you as the Lord of my life. Jesus, I will serve you from this day forward. All the days of my life, I call you my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. If you've prayed that for the first time with your heart, Reach out to us after service. Come up front. We want to give you a hug. If it's your first time praying, if you're in different nations, we are so glad you said that prayer with us. Go on to believersinternational.church. Go on there and we have brand new to Jesus. Lots of materials to help you get stronger. At the end, email us right to the bottom of the page. There's all kinds of books and all kinds of stuff on there free. You don't have to pay for anything. You have to log in. We don't want any of your, we want to just give it to you. Just go on there and look at that last part and there's an email form you can fill out and just tell us your testimony so we can be praying for you and agreeing with you. Amen. Glory to God. Well, guys, we're going to end the service right now. We're going to say for the kingdom. Um, if you've been giving into this ministry, into Believers International, because there's Believers family around the world. Listen, we, you can give by pay, PayPal.
Yeah, just go on our website, believersinternational.church. You can give by PayPal. There's a hundred different currencies you can give from your nation if you'd like to. If you're here in, in the city of the United States, you can do text to give. We have a phone number. It's also on there. I'll have it written down here. Next week, I'll have it written down so I can say it. There's a, there's a, well, actually, I'll put it on the screen. It'll be on your screen right now. Just, just text to that number and just follow the prompts. You know, otherwise, there's, if you're in Canada, United States, we have a database just week you can get involved with and, and, and log in there too. So we just want to thank you so much for your gifts of support. We are reaching the world together, sharing God's good news. Family, we are doing things for the Lord and the Lord is so pleased with, with the things we're doing and we're giving him all the glory for it. Use us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Use us, Lord. Use us some more, Father, for your glory. We want to get every drop out of us before we get to heaven. We want to do everything we can to reach everyone that we can. Well, we're going to let you go right now, Believer's Family Online. And let's say this for the kingdom because I can keep going on. I can, I can tell there's some, a few things here that I'm going to be ministering to the second. But on the count of three, one, two, three. For the kingdom, reach out to us. We love you guys. Stay strong. Stay full of peace. We love you guys in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory.